the next etiquette is in the hand of the husband. Everything has to be in accordingly. Islam says, you stand by the door and welcome your wife. First night. But if you do every day, mashallah, it's good. <laughs> of course, you have a rewire, you have to do istakbaliha. You have a rewire like that, istakbaliha, always welcome her. But you know, man, you know, man, man is mad, man. You know, man, he wants his suit to be brought to him. And he wanted to hold the bag and follow him. And then she give that, fi amanillah. But when she wants that, he said, no, I'm tired. Work-related issues, I'm tired. Man, problems. But that first night is highly recommended according to our teachings of al Bayt. I know normally they bring the wife and the husband is not even in the house. It's somewhere busy. <laughs> But Islam says this is the right way. So you open, she comes. Now they go. It is you and the wife. Listen to this etiquette. It's very, very crucial. Very important from Ahl al -Bayt. The first thing you do is to remove her shoe or socks if she's wearing you as husband. This is a rewire I'm quoting from the first imam. Imam Amir Rasulullah told him, Iza dakhalatil arus baytaq. When arus come to your house, arus means the wife. Ikhla fakhayha. Remove what she's wearing her footwear. If she's wearing socks, you remove it. But you remove it gently. I know that time you'll be shivering. Because, you know, now, now it's a new world altogether, new world order. She's in stress, you are in stress. All the shawdi is over. But Imam Rasulullah said, remove it. When you remove it, you take a water. Then you bring the water, you wash the feet. This is sunnah of Rasulullah. They ask one of our imam, why do I have to wash the feet? Then Imam said, because it is the most difficult moment for a woman. Men, sometimes they are at ease. But for a girl to leave her mom, especially, and her father, to come to a new house is not a joke. So our Imam said, doing so is telling her, I am ready to sacrifice for you. Feel at home. I will be your backbone. It, here is your home. Don't worry at all. So Amir al mumin said, wash. But does it stop there? No. Imam Amir al-Mumin said, after you finish washing, you take a water and you sprinkle the water in each and every corner of the room. You know, you see, water is a baraka, it's a blessing. Hence, we are told when we go to the graveyard, we sprinkle it also. Especially after 40 days. We are told when you sprinkle water on the grave, Allah brings 70 baraka down. The same thing applies to husband that first night. It's crucial. I know you will get billions of advices from people. Focus on the advice of Amir al muminin that will score you free and it will help you. But look at the rewire, very interesting rewire. Imam said, take the water, sprinkle each and every corner of the room. Imam Amir al muminin says, whoever does that, Allah will protect you and the wife from 70 kinds of poverty. Poverty is not only about money, poverty of knowledge, social poverty, political poverty. Sometimes you find you are good one corner, another corner you are not good. Ahmad, you guys have the opportunity and for years. Follow the true teachings of Ahl al Bayt and you are free. 70 kinds of poverty you are protected. One. Two. Imam Amir al said, if you do that, immediately Allah will send 70 kinds of a barakah and rahmah to you. And then the last imam said, you be rest assured 
there will always be a way out for you and your wife. Is that over? No. The next etiquette is to sit and look at her. Ask her if she owes salat or not. Wajibat. These are sunnah of Rasulullah. Read the books of Al Al Bayt. How many wajibat do you owe? It's not husband. Let us go no ilayha. To dwell in her. How many wajibat you owe? Take note. Because the life is going to begin now. Have you made your maghrib of tonight or not? Because, you know, many a times even the husband doesn't do. On the night they forget. Let alone the wife. So Islam says, ask. This part of the etiquette. So if she has not done the wajibat of the night at least, and you have not done it, you become her imam, and she follows you in salah. What a beautiful salah of a beautiful night. Night of blessings, night of rahmah. Half of your religion is forgiven. You're only looking for the half. Every dua you make that night, Rasulullah says there is no barrier from the acceptance of Allah. Because Rasulullah said when two families come together for marriage, Allah create many angels to serve the Ummah. After this wajib salah, if it is done, then it's fine. Then we go to the mustahab, which Amir al-Mu'mineen mentioned. Now you make wudu, she makes wudu. And you lead her in two nafila salah. Nafila, she recite, you recite. You in the front, she's standing at the back. Two raka'ah. But after the two raka'ah, there are du'as to be recited. There are so many types of du'a, ten times different. But whatever you can get, you do. One du'a from Rasulullah. Now once the, everything is finished, then you take your hand like this and you place on her forehead. Allahumma inni as'aluka khayraha wa khayra ma fiha. Ya Allah, I ask you of the khayr of this woman, grant me that khayr. And grant me of every khayr that she comes with tonight. Then he said, Ya Allah, wa a'udhu bika min sharriha wa sharri ma fiha. Allah, if there is any sharr that comes with her, Allah, we seek refuge from you. Take away that sharr. Because sharr is what makes you fight every day, misunderstanding in the house. So if you begin on a good footing, be rest assured, Allah will protect you in each and every problem. Another dua said, no. You place the hand on her forehead. Said, Allahumma hadihi zawjati. Ya Allah, this is my wife. Bifadlika razaktaha. Allah, you are the one who blessed her with your rizq. Wa ala kitabika zawashtuha. And Allah, I married her tonight through the teachings of your book. You know what you're saying? You're telling Allah, when problem comes, I will not go anywhere, but I will follow your book. You're telling Allah, she is a amanat in my hand. Then the dua continues. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Then you praise Prophet Muhammad and his family. Then he said, Ya Allah, ijma'a baynana bi ahsani ijtima'in. Allah, bring us together and closer with the best form of bonding. You are asking Allah. So you can paraphrase it, you can do it in your own English, it's fine. And then the next line of the dua, Rasulullah says, He said, Ya Allah, I know you love halal and you hate haram. Allah bless me of only halal in this family relationship. And Allah protect me from ever haram and bringing haram to feed this lady. Then he said, Ya Allah, grant me the opportunity to be obedient to you and this lady. 
He said, Ya Allah, if there will be shaitan to play with us and our iman, we ask you to take away that shaitan from us. And the last dua, which is from beautiful dua from our Sif Imam. He said, no, when she comes, just place your hand on her forehead. You look at her first and you said, Ya Allah, bi amanatika akhastuha. Allah, I've accepted and taken her as amanat from you. Yani, this girl is amanat not from the father and mom. She's amanat from Allah. Then what do we see at the end? Imam Jafar said, alayhi salam. Said, Ya Allah, bless her with rizq like the way you bless Rasulullah in Khadija al Qubra. Once this etiquette is done, then you are truly husband and wife. And then the journey of husband and wife continues. And I remember very well, Imam Jafar says, whoever observes this dua and a'mal, if that person happened to be blessed with a child on that night, that child will be among the lovers and followers of Ali Muhammad. So therefore, in short, brothers and sisters, marriage is about bringing Allah in it. You cannot do it alone. She cannot do it alone. But once we bring Allah together and we ensure that Allah is the standard and the criteria in that marriage, that marriage will be a successful marriage.